Okay, 1999 Ford Ranger. Customer complaint is uh, low power, won't get out of its own way. And uh, turn signals flash very fast. Um, all the lights tend to flicker when the turn signals are on. And the funny thing is, is the customer says this all happened at the same time. When his turn signal started acting up and the low power condition happened at the same time. Uh, initially, I don't see these as being related. Let's see what we got. Trouble codes on this vehicle are lean exhaust codes, bank one, bank two, secondary pump, uh, fuel pump, secondary circuit high trouble code. And so with these lean exhaust codes, let's go look at our fuel trim numbers next. Okay, before I start the car, some initial view here. Uh, the barrow reading, the barrow frequency is a little bit low on this, so that could be an indication of a dirty mass airflow. Uh, let's take a look at these fuel trim numbers at different speeds and see what they look like. Okay, this is the truck at idle. These numbers don't look too bad. Raise the RPM, take a look at them at a higher RPM. They did get a little bit worse with a higher RPM as would a dirty mass airflow would cause, but symptoms on this, this truck not getting out of its own way, I'm concerned about fuel pressure and things like that. Uh, one of the things about a mass airflow number is this uh, barrow frequency can certainly be low if we're running out of fuel and the truck's falling on its face and he's at wide open throttle when that would get updated. Um, I'm gonna look at fuel pressure next. All right, so fuel pressure running, I'm at 55. I'm trying to put this together with his turn signals and headlights and stuff, and I'm just not seeing these be related, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn the headlights and turn signals on and see what this fuel pressure does. Sorry for the camera angle here. I don't have my tripod. I'm gonna turn the headlights on. As soon as I turn the headlights on, my fuel pressure's dropping. Turn my turn signals on, it gets worse. That's with headlights and turn signals on. I've never seen anything like this. Rev it up, it's falling on its face. You see with the headlights and turn signals on, my short term fuel trim is real positive now. Of course, because I'm very low on fuel pressure. That's crazy. Never would have thought headlights, turn signals be tied into the fuel pump. But that matches the symptoms. Watch the pressure, I'll turn the headlights off. Headlights off, turn signal off, still fluttering a little bit, but headlights on. Check out the fuel pressure, that's awesome. All right, something's tied in. It's gotta be a ground that's shared between the, head, the lighting system and this fuel pump. So uh, let's go pull a diagram now. All right, so I pulled up a ground distribution diagram. You see where it says fuel tank assembly. And that comes over to here, and it shares this G200 ground. And the other circuits that are on this, follow this wire right here. You see my exterior lights, parking lamps, turn signals. So it's not necessarily the headlight circuit, but the parking lamp circuit that's involved that share these grounds. And of course we got plate lights in here too and some other circuits, but that's the common tie-in. So we definitely have a bad ground. Let's go find it. G200 starting at the left kick panel. We'll get a voltage measurement right there. Okay, I'm at the left kick panel. And there's my, my ground splice, that G200 ground. And it uh, could be a loose bolt. Um, very simple check. I'm gonna go on the wire behind the the um, eyelet, take a voltage reading on this, loaded circuit. There's two grounds, we'll do them both. Initial view, I'm at zero volts. Turn the headlights on, let's load this circuit. 0.02, that looks good. Go to the other ground wire now. Well, before we go to the other ground, I just started the car just to be sure. Let's load the ground as much as possible. Fuel pump's running now. 
and the headlights are on, 0.02 on that ground, nothing wrong with that, that ground. Here's the other ground wire, 0.02. So the ground point is good on the body of the car. We got to backtrack now. One thing I forgot to mention for my multimeter ground connection, I am connected directly to battery negative. That's very important when you're chasing ground problems that you're not using the body of the car. You could have a bad body ground. So I am directly connected to battery negative for this test. All right, a little bit difficult to follow these grounds, but um, they go into this harness that run along the floorboard. And, uh, and then they run underneath the truck. And so what I'm gonna do is go underneath and try to look at this harness underneath and see if we got some wiring damage under there instead of pulling this whole interior apart. Okay, I'm underneath the truck. Here's where the harness comes out. It goes to a main connector. Anywhere you have connectors underneath vehicles would be suspect areas. And uh, I've already found the bad ground. And uh, I want to try to shoot it first, and then I want to do some voltage measurements on it. I'm afraid if I touch it, it's going to break all the way. Uh, let's see if I can point this out to you without breaking it completely. Um, it's a black wire. And it is right here. I had to cut this back a little bit. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Kind of see, if I flip this over, I'm gonna break it. I'll try not to. That's the bad ground wire right there. See the wire sticking out right here? I'll try to get a shot on this with my voltmeter. What I want to do is show you guys how to do a voltage drop test. I'm going to measure it right here. We're going to have high voltage on this ground and then I'll measure it on the other side of the connector and show you it's good. So I'll try to do it hopefully without breaking it. If I break the wire, whatever, this is our problem. Bad ground. All right, so I'm using a piercing tool. I'm in front of the bad ground. I'm on the pump side of the bad ground. And I'll show you right now on the meter, I've got a reading. 4.6 volts on a, on a pump ground. That's actually shared with the, the parking lights. Gotta turn the parking lights on. Load the ground even more. You see we got 10 volts on that ground. So basically this pump's running with four volts. No wonder it's dropping. That is a loaded circuit bad ground right there. And that's right in front of our corrosion. Um, go ahead and shut the truck off. And just uh, leave the uh, parking lights on for me. Turn the headlights off, just parking lights. All right, that's good. You see with just the parking lights on, we have less current flow, so less um, of a voltage problem. Um, this shows you the reason that you need to do loaded circuit test. Um, Al, turn that key on so we don't hear that buzzing. There's your pump prime, it shut off. That's a bad ground. Um, I'm good now, buddy. You can go do what you're doing. So we got 1.5 volts wow. with the uh, with the parking lights on. Keys on, Paul. Keys on, thank you. And we'll just use that number to track it the rest of the way. I'm gonna try to show you this ground again. Get my multimeter out of the way. I apologize for the shakiness of this. If you knew where I was, you'd understand. get my finger on here Oops. you see this insulation on this ground is broken and it's all green and corroded yeah this isn't a spot out that nobody was here man no over there. Uh -uh. let's see if I can get this out of here without breaking this ground I think I just broke it. I did. That's it right there. Sorry I couldn't show you the front side of it. What you would have seen though, if I could have put the voltmeter on this, on the front side of this brake, is we would have had good voltage here, bad voltage here, bad ground right there. And that ground is shared by the, the uh, Parking lights, plate lights, fuel pump, and that's why this customer was complaining about the lighting issue. 
when he turned his headlights on, hit the brake, and uh, turn signals, he tried to accelerate and the truck wouldn't get out of its own way. Setting our lean exhaust codes, setting our fuel pump secondary code, circuit high code. Wow, kind of crazy. Never, never would have thought those were tied together, but when they share the same ground, anything can happen. All right, here's that ground with it out of the plug. So I'm gonna fix that and make sure everything else looks good. I think we're gonna be okay. Bad ground. All right, here's the repair. Used a crimp uh, connector. Don't really like these too much, but it is a heat shrink style, so I was comfortable using it underneath the vehicle. So it's nice and, and uh, sealed up. And uh, let's get some readings, mainly our, our uh, fuel pressure. And um, I guess we could do a voltage reading again right here while we're here. All right, hey Al, can you turn my uh, my parking lights on for me? Ooh, parking. parking lights are on? Yes. We've got 0.02, I had 1.5 before. Can you jump in and uh, push the clutch and start this for me? Get the pump running too? Point. That's all right, I'll get it. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. That's much better. 100 millivolts, a lot better than 10 volts. That's a fix. Let's go up front, see what our fuel pressure gauge looks like. All right, so parking lights are on, turn signals are on. Fuel pressure looks great. That's a fix. Uh, the other thing too, the turn signals were flashing very fast before. They're not doing that anymore. Bad ground causing all the problems. Related ground between the fuel pump, turn signals, parking lights. That's it. 99 Ford Ranger with a bad ground.